So I want to tell you about what we should be doing with long-term survivors of childhood neuroblastoma. And neuroblastoma, as you know, is a childhood tumor. You already knew it was going to be a childhood thing because it's this blastoma. So when we see that blast word in there, what that means is it's a primitive neuroectodermal tumor. So the ones we see, retinoblastoma, neuroblastoma, medulloblastoma, they're all the same type of primitive neuroectodermal tumor that leads to a childhood cancer. And for neuroophthalmology, of course, it can be a direct effect of the cancer. And if it's the cancer itself, the way it comes to us is orbital involvement. And it's often bilateral proptosis with a compressive optic neuropathy, ophthalmoplegia, and they might have a characteristic finding called raccoon eyes, which is this periorbital, non-traumatic, non-hypertensive, bilateral periorbital ecchymoses. Those are the two ways that it comes from the direct metastatic lesion in the orbit. The other way it comes to neurop is with opsoclonus. So they have this dancing eyes and dancing feet syndrome where they have a perineoplastic effect of underlying neuroblastoma somewhere. That is not a direct effect of the cancer. It is a multivectorial saccade to saccade to saccade, and it looks like dancing eyes, and they might have it in their feet as well. And then the other way it comes to us is because the neuroblastoma appears in the sympathetic chain, if it's in your neck, it can cause a sympathetic lesion called a Horner syndrome with a little ptosis and a little pupil, which is worse in the dark. So orbital involvement, opsoclonus, and the Horner syndrome are the way the acute neuroblastoma comes to neuro. But the other thing you need to know is that the, these children are going to survive. So low-risk neuroblastoma has like a 95% re remission rate. And even the worst neuroblastomas, 50% of those kids are going to live to adulthood. And so once they become an adult, even if the neuroblastoma is in remission, there's no orbital disease, their optic neuropathy is old and unchanged, they have no opsoclonus, they have no Horner syndrome, we still have to worry about the long-term secondary effects in adult survivors of childhood neuroblastoma. And so the first thing you got to make sure is make sure it's not a secondary cancer. So weirdly, once you have one cancer, if it's treated with radiation or chemo especially, you might get a secondary leukemia or thyroid cancer years later. So you need to make sure it's not this, even if they're in remission. The second thing is the chemo therapy has side effects and that can cause the hearing loss in long-term survivors, which means they have both vision loss and hearing loss and the chemotherapeutic agents. Some of the anthracyclines that are used as part of the chemo regimen have myotoxicity to the heart. So they have cardiac problems that they have to be followed for. There can be endocrinopathies, especially if you've been radiated because your pituitary might not function as well. So we've got to worry about the hormones. And you can have deformities in the bone and your jaw and dentition as a result of the treatment of the disease. And of course, the long-term psychological burden, both to the patient and to their caregivers. You need to recognize that these children have been through the ringer and so have their families. And so they often come with some psychological burden. So Long-term survivors of neuroblastoma, as they're making the transition from the children's hospital to the adult center, need to have different types of low vision. They've already had ODVT, the optical devices, optometric-driven vision therapy, magnifiers, cameras, those types of things. But now they're making the transition to adulthood. That means they need socialization, recreational, occupational, and this is a different kind of therapy. OT, VT, occupational therapy driven, vision therapy aimed at getting this person back integrated into society. And that's what comes to me, even though neuroblastoma is a children's disease. We as adult neuroophthalmologists here at this hospital need to know what to do with long-term adult survivors of childhood neuroblastoma.